had many believers said, you know, I, 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 I was tempted. And I tell them, it's because you look temptable. There is a look you carry that sin cannot look at you. Many believers look temptable. They look temptable in their appearance. There is a way you appear that sinners will want to follow you now. There is a way you speak that they want to join you in speaking. Beginning with your greetings. Oh boy, how are you Is that what you learn from scripture? When you greet in scripture, it is well. When you greet in scriptures, peace be unto you. When you meet with people and tell them peace be unto you, they don't answer you back, oh boy, okay. They, they keep quiet if they don't know what to say. But we, you see, we have adopted many things into the church. That's why sinners come to church and they feel comfortable, sit down with us, we preach, they don't get convicted and go back home as saints. In the days of Peter, when they preached, 3,000 souls gave their life to Christ because the unction was so strong, the presence of the Lord, the righteousness of God was so present that sinners couldn't go back from him. But today, beginning from the altar to the eye, so everywhere, pollution. Hi guys, this is Emika Anstem, and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. I really hope that my videos have been a blessing to you, and I thank you for always coming back and back again to my channel to watch my content. All right, let's get back to this video and be blessed. Yes. You know, in the world today, they say if you can't beat them, join them. Don't join them. Say so, me, I will not join them. I didn't hear you very well. Not everybody is taking bribe. Not everybody is stealing government money. Don't join them. Not all pastors are extortioners. Don't join them. Not all believers are fornicating. Don't join them. Noah was a just man. Abraham was a just man. Job, a perfect man, an upright man. A man who feared the Lord and eschewed evil. Joseph was a just man. Jacob said, my righteousness will speak for me. They all lived as covenant righteous people. They were mocked, but they could not be stopped. They stood out clearly. And I know you will stand out clearly. Well, I didn't hear somebody say amen. Yeah. If I pray that you will prosper with billions this week, I know your amen will be louder. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the foundation. Righteousness exalts. Sin is a reproach. No matter how handsome you look, once you live in sin, you have lost it all. Sin is a reproach. Sin is a reproach. Sin is a polluter. It's a reproach. Iniquity is the peak of sinfulness. Because it is the peak where people become so lawless because their conscience is dead. You know, there are different kinds of sins. There are certain sins you, that is called error. You didn't mean it, but you just fell into that error. How do you know it's an error? Because your conscience will prick you and you quickly become sober and repent. But there are people who know they are sinning and they are not repentant. That's iniquity. When you become unrepentant at evil, you are already living in iniquity. You better talk to yourself and run back. You are kicking your wife every day. And they tell you it's not wrong. You say, what do you mean? Ready to slap her again. You are already living in iniquity. Iniquity. You abandon your family. Pursuing after another woman. Iniquity. Complete iniquity. Even if you give the fattest offering in the church, you are living in iniquity. Men may receive it, but God has rejected it. You better hear it all. Iniquity means people living lawlessly when they know something is evil and they are still promoting it and they are very proud of it. Conscience dead, living in iniquity. No more soberness. And that's what's happening in the church today. We have lost our sense of soberness. We don't repent again when we do wrong. As a matter of fact, we pride ourselves when wrong is being done. And the Bible says, in the end time, it shall be on the increase. 
Quickly, look at a few scriptures here. Matthew 24, 12. Jesus said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That is, people will be discouraged. Why are sinners prospering and I'm not prospering? Satan will want to tempt your love. See, when you drop your love for God, you enter into the other side of the devil. You must keep loving God. What kept Joseph away from sin was his love for God. How shall I do these things and sin against my God? Genesis 39, 9. When God is removed out of the equation of life, Satan takes over and becomes the center of activity. How can I do this and sin against God? How can I do? Nobody sees me, but God sees me. The believers will be so tempted in this end time. I don't know. Some people here may be going through what I'm talking about. It will increase. You will see sinners flourishing. And you'll be wondering, why is my own case like this? And Satan will say, can I, have, I, have I not told you? Have I not told you? You are going to church too much. You are talking God too much. Everything. God, 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 God. Everything, God. He's accusing you. But don't you worry. David said in Psalm 73 verse 17. He said, until I went into the house of the Lord, then understood I their end. How that they are on a slippery ground. They don't have a future, but you have a future. Even if you lose everything on earth, yeah, eternity is waiting for you. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? In any case, Jesus did not promise you you will not get anything here. He said, when you serve him, you will get it back in hundredfold. Here on earth, it may only be a matter of time. It may be a matter of time. Look at me here. We were mocked before. Because nothing seems to be happening. We didn't look close to succeeding. And we were mocked for it. But waiting and waiting and waiting on the Lord. Gradually, we are getting there. All the mockers now become our beggars. Be patient. Keep loving God. Don't join them in iniquity. They will give you several offers. So you can look like them. But I'm not seeking to look like the world because I'm the light of the world. Everything around me may look dark today, but that scripture has not changed. He said, you are the light of the world. Say loud, amen. amen. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. You find all of the list of the evil that will be taking place in this end time. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Times of confusion, depression. For men shall become lovers of their own selves. Instead of loving God, they will become covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good. Can you see that? They'll be despising you for doing good. Taunting you, frustrating you, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, religiosity will still continue without spirituality. But denying the power thereof and turn, he said, from such, turn away, turn away, don't follow their ways, turn their way, turn away from them. For your further reading, you can look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. Today, we have many in the church who are living lawless. I fear for the church of Jesus, because gradually, evil is creeping in. Evil is creeping in. To the extent that we embrace them, we don't even talk against them again. We count it as part of the day. But there will always be a few righteous people who will keep speaking. Say loud, amen. amen. I pray you will be one, one of them. Amen. Now, let me show you one danger here. When the children of Israel were on their way to the promised land, they came into a nation or across a nation where the king hired a soothsayer to cause them. Balaam, Balak is the name of the king. He hired Balaam to cause them. But they were uncursable. On what account? Let me show it to you. Numbers 23. Verses 20 and 21. 
Come with me very quickly. Behold, I have received commandment to bless. That's the man that was to cause them. And he, God, had blessed them, and I cannot reverse it. On what account? Because he had not beheld iniquity in Jacob. So where there is no iniquity, there cannot be causes. Neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him. And therefore the shout of a king is among them. Not the weeping of oppression. So he couldn't cause them. But look at what happened in chapter 25. Sin is highway to the devil. Chapter 25, verses 1, for time, you can read it down the line to about verse 10. And Israel, the same people that could not be caused, abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit wardom with the daughters of Moab. Satan arranged for Moabite women to flood their camp. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods, the Moabites. And the people of Israel did it and bowed down to their gods. And what happened? And Israel joined himself unto Baal poor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled them. Men could not kill them. God was moved to destroy them. 22,000 people were destroyed. Why are we having evil stepping into the camp of God's people today? Because God's people have stepped into sin. You can't step into sin and escape Satan's punishment. Sin is highway to the devil. Holiness is highway to God. This is the reason why we need that spirit. We are redeemed to be holy as God is holy. But this cannot be a reality without the help of the spirit of holiness. We cannot do it by ourselves. Many of us have been pushed and pushed and pushed into temptation. It took the help of the Holy Spirit to overcome. Because iniquity will so multiply. Do you know, evil people are baptized into evil. So God's people, righteous people, must be baptized into righteousness. Before they infect you with unrighteousness, infect them with your righteousness. That's what we are talking about this morning. There are evil people and there are also good people. So it's a confrontation. It's a confrontation. Overcoming evil with good. You must get so baptized in righteousness that iniquity cannot look at you. I have had many believers say, you know, I, 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 I was tempted. And I tell them it's because you look temptable. There is a look you carry that sin cannot look at you. Many believers look temptable. They look temptable in their appearance. There is a way you appear that sinners will want to follow you now. There is a way you speak that they want to join you in speaking. Beginning with your greetings. Oh boy, how are you doing? Is that what you learn from scripture? When you will greet in scripture, it is well. When you greet in scriptures, peace be unto you. When you meet with people and tell them peace be unto you, they don't answer you back, oh boy, okay. They, they keep quiet if they don't know what to say. But we, you see, we have adopted many things into the church. That's why sinners come to church and they feel comfortable, sit down with us. We preach, they don't get convicted and go back home as saints. In the days of Peter, when he preached, 3,000 souls gave their life to Christ because the unction was so strong, the presence of the Lord, the righteousness of God was so present that sinners couldn't go back from him. But today, beginning from the altar to the eye, so everywhere, pollution, unholy jesting, unholy talks, unedifying expressions. You know the kind of message you send on your SMS now? The things you won't say to your wife, you are saying to them, I just love you. You look quite kinky today. How won't you be tempted? How won't you be tempted? When last did you tell your wife, I love you? When last did you tell your wife, you are dressing well? But when you go out, you know what to tell people now? And after telling them, it registers in your mind. Your mind is following them. 
Beware of iniquity. We need the outpouring of the spirit of holiness upon our lives and upon the church this last day. Because to be carnally minded is sin and to be spiritually minded is life. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. We need to become spiritually minded as against carnally minded. We need to exercise ourselves unto righteousness. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 7 to 8. We need